All right, guys. I'm going to talk about depression a little bit. Now, myself, I've got to admit, I, I don't think I ever do suffer with depression, but the problem you have these days is everyone tries to make everything expansive so they can shove you on medication or something. Um, but I do understand there's certain points in your life where things get dragged down, and if you're not careful, they can keep dragging you down. Um, I set, I hit reset buttons. Um, I suppose in the mental health world, they call them triggers, which is the opposite effect. <laughs> so I do reset buttons. If I know something's affecting me in such a negative way, like say the job is really horrendous, I will literally quit and just move on. I know a lot of you guys haven't got that option. Um, but if it's getting you that down, then you need to assess what you're doing because your health, your health is your wealth at the end of the day. Um, so my point being is for me, I, I'll reset, you know, if I'm having a really, really bad day, I'll just go to bed early and it's not because I'm feeling really, really depressed and down. It's because I always go new day, new start, move on and forget about the day before and just reset it. That's it. It's, um, I think it's very, I'll say it's very healthy because there's nothing, there's nothing that sort of lingers or is unfinished business or anything that sort of stuff so for me that works but the reason I'm bringing this up is I do hear a phrase and you'll see it on TV a lot where they'll go just snap out of it um, and I think that's what they're trying to point at is for because if you don't have depression, you don't really understand it. Um, so, so the point being is, when you start getting somebody go, oh, I'm feeling depressed, snap out of it, stop being like that. Reality is, you don't actually understand what their issues are. You don't understand what's causing it. You don't understand the, the how deep it is, how psychological it is, all that sort of stuff. Well, like I said, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but what I have seen, and I, well, this is the point of the video, apologies, just making the coffee, my new coffee machine. Um, my point being is, since this COVID fiasco started, or phenomenon, whatever you want to call it, the amount of people I know that have had really bad depression has gone through the roof. I mean, I knew a few people before, but now it must be one in five. And some of it's been work-related because companies have been, some companies are quite aggressive in this whole climate. Just, you know, got people off six, so let's bully the people that are still here. Some of it is around, sort of, well, we'll call it forced loneliness forced into a lockdown, forced to stay away from people and a lot of people are relying on social living. They're not used to being on their own all the time. Um, with a house, the room I rent in the UK, there's a guy in there. He, he struggles with being on his own because um, in the house we all generally don't socialise. I mean, um, it's not that we're all negative or whatever, but to be fair, we're all working, we all work different different times. I mean, one of the guy upstairs is on, I think he's 10, 10, 6. No, no, he comes in about 10 o'clock, the other way around. He finishes about 10 o'clock at night, so you don't you hardly see him. I probably see him once every two months. Um, then you've got guys that work in, like, say, the Amazon warehouse, so they, uh, they're in they're in the uh, 5 a.m. shifts, well, work for 6 a.m. type thing. Then... You've got other people in there that, like myself, busy during the day um, and try as much as possible not to be sat around in the house because it is a bit depressing because, <laughs> it's you know, the, the room's not massive, but I spend a lot of time out in restaurants and stuff and it was St. April going back and I know where Ben was on about it. I'm not going to do bodybuilding, Ben, but I'm going to start doing my cardio again. I'll speak to a friend Ash about this as well because he he started the same. He goes to the goes to the gym every morning, does an hour a day. Um, so I'm going to start doing that. But 
the depression aspect, there's been a lot more people I know affected by um, their original issues, plus the COVID stuff stacked on top. I'm not getting into the fact of suicide rates and stuff like that today, because um, I do think that's an important subject and it's sort of been brushed under the carpet with uh, the protect the NHS, COVID attacking everybody um, environment. But then again, suicides is more of just a mop up, isn't it? For the it doesn't involve the healthcare services, the funeral homes. Um, I know it sounds a bit morbid, but I'm more frustrated about the mentality in the NHS. It's very dictatorship. Um, so my, my point being is. I can only advise you from my perspective. My perspective will not be as bad as I know some of you guys suffer with. Um, and I know some of you people rely on medication or that sort of stuff. Myself, I'm not a keen user of medication, in even antibiotics. Um, I only use when I actually need them, you know, if it's to a point where I actually risk of an infection. Because most of the time I don't use a lot of medication. You know, if I've got a headache, I, I just write it out. I don't... <coughs> <coughs> Strong believer, if I need the medication, I need the medication. It's not a case of, oh yeah, just take a couple of aspirin here, a couple of paracetamol, a couple of ibuprofen. I try and avoid it. Because um, otherwise, your immune system builds up as well. But I'm not talking about medical today on that aspect. But... I think a lot of it is finding how you can move it forward, but the only person who can do that is yourself. Um, you will get a lot of people advise you, you will get a lot of people say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll sit and have a session and discuss it every week. But I've, I've never been in one of these sessions. It'd be interesting to know, does it actually help? Because it's a bit like medication. There, there seems to be an oversubscription on medication, in my personal opinion. I think writing somebody off and just shoving getting to shove meds down their neck every week um to support uh medical companies um seems like an easy option to me um it's not an option i like it's not an option i agree with i think a lot of people have the ability <clears throat> to sort themselves out with a bit of direction or a bit of trying to get on the right path uh, i mean i it's a bit like religion. Now, religion for me, um, I get it from the perspective of, I, it's not the be all and end all. I get the fact that the, the belief in something that is something that can't be confirmed um, is slightly peculiar to me because I'm very, um, focused on what what is real. Um, however, I have seen a lot of people go through some very very difficult dire times that are now very religious because it refocused them away from whatever was causing the problem, causing the pain, um, and put them in a better space. Now, for me. I think that's good. Science is not exploited. Um, yeah, you know, let's be honest. The church is not the uh, not exactly short of cash, but at the same time, I can understand people being spiritual to find a a path, you know, a path of enlightenment, whatever you want to call it. It can often put put the focus away from what was dragging somebody down into a perspective that could be understood, like I said, a terrestrial being or whatever. Um, I can't get my head around in the sense of it's not been proven and I'm more a case of, well, once somebody proves something, I'll look into it. That's, that's my personal view on it. Um, but fully understand where somebody goes, yeah, this is this is the uh, the meaning of this. This is it, because for them, 
they found something that gives focus and it's a positive focus because you know people go oh yeah but they believe in something that's not there or whatever it's like it doesn't matter you know what that person was an absolute wreck before they found that absolute wreck rather than popping pills they got a focus they got something that brought them back from the brink of despair and it, it could be the loss of a child it could be stuff that most people can't fathom unless you've been in that situation but the point being is it turned their lives around and that's the key to it so I do think seeking out something that can do it I know it's hard uh, you know I, don't get me wrong because most people that you know I have these conversations with because um, I've got some friends that have been suffering with depression a long time um, and they do get irritated when you say well come on you know let's do something let's let's try and do something um, and the low self esteem piece can often be a problem so, so you know like a friend of mine suffers with weight gain so I'll go and help him, but I can't be there. I'm not his fitness coach. He's got to meet me halfway. So got him motivated a bit, got him to lose some weight, got him to take some, um, um, what do you call it? The, um, like, diet sachets and all that stuff. And he's, his weight dropped considerably straight away. But the problem is, unless you're looking back as well and going not going to get back into that state it's very easy to slip back into that state and this is what I'm saying for me the reset button is always there if I was getting into that scenario I'd go need to stop and I don't know if people with depression or whatever have that mechanism in them I have no idea um, <clears throat> but but for some people that I'm experiencing you have to go back and start all over again um, and the, I'm not trying to change the guy's life don't get me wrong um, he does actually want me to help him with some of this stuff it's not a case of um, I'm just doing it because I think he should lose weight or whatever I'm doing it because he's a friend and we get to these conversations and I'll go oh yeah well I use this or whatever I say I mean at the moment uh, going to the gym every day is something I'm going to be starting to do going to be in the gym at five o'clock in the morning going forward and as soon as I say that I commit to it but that's that's me I'll do that and once I set my routine it stays that way I mean with the work in the UK it's been painful the last two and a half years it's been absolute pain <coughs> excessive work etc um, I'm not going to get into it too long-winded but it's not been a great environment um, but the thing is I started getting up at half six and guess what I still get up at half six but now because joke being don't get paid until nine o'clock um, I was working from then I get up at half six wash shower teeth start work at seven and work two hours early in the morning and then I'll do the same at the end of the night I've stopped doing it What's happening now, you know, I'm going to my UK routine, because obviously I'm sat in Spain at the minute, but in the UK, I'll get up at half six, I'd watch the news for an hour. Um, I'd read a book and do some stuff, you know, chat to the wife when she got up to take kids to school. Because um, that's quite good, because Spain's an hour in front. It means there is enough time to speak to April, uh, sometimes the kids depending on how happy they are first thing in the morning um, but those those hours I've took back have been beneficial to me and that may be an example of something that um, you may not be doing is making time for yourself those are the same hours I'll be focusing some of my new training and stuff on it'll go right hour a day first thing in the morning get up and, and you start building your daily routines because the routines will help bring things forward even you know where you sit and look at you know because I have whiteboards none here at the minute I think they're all still at the old house 
But on the whiteboards, it will go what I have to do, whether it's <clears throat> stuff I have to do today, stuff I have to do that week, five year plan, whatever is on there. Um, and like I said, with a five year plan, I've sort of scrapped the five year off it now. Um, because let's be fair, COVID's been unfair to me business wise. <laughs> Uh, how are you supposed to expand um, and move on a five-year plan when you basically had nearly two years wiped out um, because the entire environment has changed around you and the cost of travel is shot through the roof? Um, that's the reality. You know, you've got to be realistic on this. Um, so the point being is, you can sit there and go, "What can I do about this?" And at the moment. There's nothing I can focus on that except scrub the five year off the top. <laughs> Although to be fair, um, I think we're in. This will be the second year of the five year. I think it is. We've got the first property. Uh, but back on subject, I think it's important to actually recognise what's causing the issues. And like I says, whiteboards. Because the, the reason I do this is I get up in the morning. Sometimes you might forget something may not feel like doing it which is sometimes that feeling you know especially if you um had a crappy day the day before and you're going up all fresh all start get back into it and you look up there and go gym for one hour and think oh come on you know i deserve a day off um but you go it's on the list got to do it got to do it and the focus should be this list it's to your benefit because it's the only person who benefits from that list, you. Um, and like I said, it could be order, I don't know, from um, fresh smoothies. I get a lot of smoothies from, I think it's not Master Chef, was it? Something Chef, um, which are all, from, um, I have these green super smoothies and stuff like that. I have the, one of those in the morning, then I have one for lunch, and then I'll have a main meal. Those seem to work quite well. And the reason I actually like those is I shove them in the blender. It's already pre-done. Um, it's all fresh fruit and stuff out of the freezer. And it works. So you go, right, that's two meals a day sorted. You start going to a gym in the morning. In the afternoon, you might actually want to walk at the park for 20 minutes. Not because of the exercise, but to clear your head. Because, you know... Another thing people don't recognise is the crap that builds up around you. Sometimes if you're going for a walk, it's very, very good in clearing nonsense. Same as listening to music and other things. <coughs> but I know it's not an easy, easy um, thing to get out of because I've got friends who have had depression for years. But what is surprising, like I said, is the number of people now I know and a lot of it has been caused by isolation and poor working conditions. Um, well, working environment rather than conditions, because, yeah, I suppose it's working conditions. Um, it's the way they've been treated at work. And to be fair, a lot of them have done the smartest thing. They've quit and gone on somewhere else. Great idea. You know, if the company won't change and you're not doing something wrong, it's to do with their failures. Don't blame me for quitting. The company's let you down, not the other way around. That's the other thing is recognise when it's not your fault. Because uh, there's other people I know may get frustrated. Sometimes it's their fault, sometimes it's not. But if they start absorbing everything as if they are responsible, it just drags you further down. In the same way, if it is your fault, recognise it. And it's like, you know, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday about this with tiling. Um, because years ago, because I can do tiling, like I tie around the kitchen's worktop and whatever. And I said, you know, I was doing some work for the local authorities. They go, oh yeah, you said you tile them. I said, yeah, I'll tile around the sink. I'll tile, you know, two rows of tiles. No problem whatsoever. I'm not tiling a bathroom with 600 tiles or whatever. You know, those little ones. And they go, yeah, but you said you could tile. Yeah, there's a big difference between small tile and I'm not a tiler you know back then I was a carpenter <laughs> so 
It's because their own guys wouldn't touch it with a barge pole because they knew it was an absolute disaster job because the walls aren't level. When you start taking the old tiles off because it's gone straight out of the plasterboard, the plasterboard comes off, so you need to overboard or take the boards off and reboard. It, it's a major, major job. And then it's like, oh, we thought it'd only take a day. So the point being is, that's where you got to go, that is, A, not my fault, but B, it's not my responsibility. You've got to throw some of this stuff back sometimes. Take the pressure off yourself. Oh, I need it done by Friday. It won't get done by Friday. I've got too much other stuff to do. If you want to take some of my other work off me, I'll do it by Friday. Oh, no, it's got to be done. It won't be done. I, and I've just explained why. And one of the things I used to do when people were like that is fill in my Outlook calendar. And I'll go, right, I need this, I need this, which you'll get from directors and whatever and pushy, pompous people that often don't know their own job and reliant on you covering their ass by doing their work for them a lot of the time, is you fill your calendar in. And they'll go, right, I need this, I need it. And you go, right, where's it fit in? What do you mean? Well, I filled in for the whole week. Where does it fit in? Which meetings do you want me to cancel? What work is not getting done this week then? Because all of it is a priority. Oh, well, it's got to get do it yourself then. And sometimes you've got to do that because in certain environments, those people assume they can just bully and you'll, they'll just push you to do what they demand. That In a work environment, that's called tyranny. When they're not listening to um, realistic... Um, realistic information it's not opinions if you filled your calendar out and going well that's going to take me an hour that's going to take me oh yeah that's in your opinion it's like well it's my normal job so i know how long these jobs take it's not just randomly thrown in there um but that's where you're sort of getting into this environment where people think push you down push back because they'll just keep pushing you down if you let them um especially if it starts affecting your mental health, you shouldn't be getting yourself locked into that environment and you should be more frustrated and sort of, not angry in an aggressive way, but angry in a way to push back to say, how, you know, sort of in your mind, how dare you? Just do your job. If you actually knew what you were doing, you wouldn't be asking me to do this because you already know I'm busy. But that comes with experience, comes with knowledge, etc. But... If you let it happen, they'll just keep adding and adding and adding. Um, I've come across it with multiple companies over the years. Um, you'll find a lot of dead weight just hovers around there because they literally just don't do it. And they found a way that because they've been there so long, HR won't get rid of them because they're actually just doing their jobs. They just won't take any extra work on. Um, or they'll make a mess of it on purpose and go, it wasn't my job. I said I couldn't do it. And they don't care. <laughs> I love those people as well. Um, back on track, though. I do think it's important to assess and evaluate yourself. Because, um, like I said, I'm not really gone down the route of um, therapy ever. Um, so I can't really comment on that. But I do think a lot of the stuff comes out get another session, get another session, especially if it's on the, on the payroll. Um, but I was listening to Jordan Peterson and, that, and there was the last two interviews, uh, recent ones, um, about his his issues that he's, he's had around the problems with his wife, with, um, expecting his wife to die of cancer and um, his addiction to I think it was an antidepressant or something, something health wise, and some other problems. And when he was discussing where he was, it was in a very, very dark place. You know, where he didn't want to hear sound, he'd have to lay, you know, cover his eyes and not see anything. And that's that's where you got. If you're getting to that sort of level, you really need to assess what what what's dragging you to that place. <clears throat> Now, with Jordan, fully get it. You know, if your wife's dying, 
it's it's not a good place to be, especially if you're um, a close couple, because a lot of people are a couple. You know, it's like if one dies, the other one dies in a year. It's quite common. I mean, my parents died that way because they were always together. So you lose one, you lose both. So it is a real thing, you know, in that sense. But it was interesting hearing, I mean, the fact that you can discuss it, I think is an important thing. And I haven't seen any ridicule or, or negative media around that because I know he does get a lot of flack um, around his <laughs> facts. You know, I can't even say they were opinions because a lot of it is factual. And he will actually quote where he got the information from, which makes it fact rather than opinion. Um, but he does get a lot of negative stuff um, from different small groups. Um, but it was just interesting. And I do recommend looking for those, his recent ones, because he's got a new book come out. Um, because... He recognised where he was, and he recognised how to move things forward. It's like he, I think he says he dances with his wife once a week. And he's still doing that. But he was doing it, um, I think, every day when his wife was dying. Because he didn't know it was the last day. So, he's still in like a recovery mode. <coughs> because of the circumstances. In the, in the sense of he was near the loss of his wife. So, so you've got to bear that in mind. Not everything's an instant recovery either. Because like that, <clears throat> he's talking about the one thing of dancing with his wife once a week on the Thursday, I think he said it was. And his mind drops back to every day where he's wondering if it's her last day. That takes time to get out of that because your your fear and risk is you're going to be back to that situation. And that's something you can't say, I'll oh, just snap out of it. It's impossible. Because that's the fear of loss. Um, but I do think, it was good to see him on the interview. He does seem to be in a much better space now. But I do think it's important to recognise what you can fix, what you can't fix, what is other people's issues, what is your issues, um, and take it from there and move forward. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes it helps to be open with, with people. I mean, the business, it was a bit of a bizarre conversation just randomly with one of the, one of the carpenters that's working for us doing some toilet refits recently. Um, cause we got into the conversation with, about Jordan Peterson and he was saying, I'm, I'm the only person he's met that actually knew who he was, but then he was on about how, um, Jordan Peterson and his evaluation of life had changed cause he tried to commit suicide. Um, but his perspective and everything changed. And one of the key things he said was that instead of letting things build up, instead of, um, letting things drag him down, he'll confront it there and then. You know, if somebody's not happy with something, what you're not happy with. He's there. Where before, he may, he would have, well, he would have drawn into himself. You know, try and avoid conflict, try not to upset the person, try and avoid them. Um, but now it's like, well, what's the issue? And it's, and that is a big change. Because if you... If you are quite an inward person, that is the complete opposite of who you normally would be. But it's often those circumstances that may be affecting yourself or someone else because they don't they don't go, no, nah, I'm not accepting that there and then. If you're not happy with it, fine. But what you're not happy with? Rather than somebody go, it's crap, and you just take it. You go, what's crap? What? Take it head on. Because you're not going to dwell on it. You're not uh, going to think about it. You've cut it. You've done it there and then. What is it? What's the problem? 
and I find in most cases that that works. I think if things fester, carry on, you may come back with a worse response or you go inward. Where actually you're better off just going, no, I don't accept that. So, well, there's some stuff to think about anyway, but yeah, I do recommend reading, having a look at the new Jordan Peterson uh, interviews, the recent ones. Um, I can't remember where I seen it. One of them was on uh, was Russell Brand's show uh, on YouTube, and the other one, where is he talking? I can't remember. One of you guys may be able to tell me, but he, it was just interesting seeing that he's gone through. <coughs> the hard times and now on the way back up which was good you know in the fact you know he's recovering but it's very easy to get in that dark place and not move forward you need to break the cycle on whatever's causing it and i know it's not easy i know some of you guys go well that's easy for you so it's not that what i'm saying is the only person who can do it is yourself thanks for watching